Manx Radio's Update with Beth Espy. Fastamai, good evening. It's Monday and this is your roundup of what's happening newswise on the Isle of Man. Coming up, air traffic control breaks weren't the main reason for flight delays over the past few months. We'll hear about that in just a moment. Also tonight, another call for the Craigneish bus to be reinstated, this time from a Southern Commissioner who thinks scrapping it was madness. And we'll look ahead to an event this evening aimed at celebrating and promoting Manx producers. All that, plus we'll keep an eye on the roads as well if there's anything you need to look out for on your way home and as ever we do welcome your thoughts comments and questions 166177 or you can email studio at manxradio.com First, let's join Christian for a roundup of the main news headlines. Plans to bring in new policies designed to tackle the impact of drugs could be delayed due to a lack of resources. The Department of Home Affairs hopes to have the proposals ready for November's sitting of Timwald, but limited resources mean the date is at risk. The entrance to Nobles Hospital will be turning pink this week as part of efforts to raise awareness about organ donation. The Human Tissue and Organ Donation Act, also known as Daniel's Law, will soon come into effect on the Isle of Man, introducing an opt-out system. An event in Douglas tonight is hoping to put local businesses in touch with and celebrate those making and growing things on the Isle of Man. Meet the Producers has been organised by government and takes place at the Market Hall from 530 and three Manx sixth form students have described a trip to the United Space School in America as phenomenal. They spent two weeks planning a mission to Mars at the base in Houston and Texas after winning scholarships. In international news, nurses have told the UK government they want to feel valued after rejecting a 5.5% pay rise. Members of the Royal College of Nursing say they've been neglected for 10 years. Hundreds of primary school children in England will be able to get a free breakfast from April next year, ahead of a nationwide rollout. The UK Chancellor Rachel Reeves made the announcement in her speech at the Labour Party conference in Liverpool. Officials in Lebanon say more than 270 people have been killed in Israeli airstrikes today. They say 21 children and 31 women are among the dead. Hezbollah has been firing rockets at Israel. And England's women's cricket captain Heather Knight has been given a suspended fine of £1,000 because of a social media post where she was pictured in blackface. It was from an end-of-season fancy dress party in 2012. She has apologised. Those are the update news headlines next at six. Thanks very much indeed, Christian. So the weather forecast, not quite as good as it was this time last week, but not too bad tonight. It's going to stay dry, but it will be a little bit cloudy, but it will be dry overnight with minimum temperatures around 10. Tomorrow, another Another largely dry day, sunny intervals, only isolated showers, light or moderate winds, maximum temperatures tomorrow 15. Staying dry during the day on Wednesday, but rain and strong winds will develop at night and those will last through Thursday. I mean, to be fair, it is nearly the end of September, isn't it? So it's fine. Sunset this evening, 7.13. Sunrise tomorrow morning, 8 minutes past 7. Manx Glass and Glazing don't just do the big jobs. It's easy to repair broken greenhouse glass at Manx Glass and Glazing. For greenhouse glass cut to size, call 674 573. If you run a small business or just need more room in the back, Philshaw Vehicles has the perfect van or light commercial for all your needs and can sort out any finance. Based in the Tremode Estate, view philshawvehicles.im or call 4951. A great night's sleep got even better with Zed's Bedding Store. From quality bell dorm bed linen and mattress protectors, fleece and woven throws, to luxury duvets from the fine bedding company. Zed's Bedding Ramsey, next to Isle of Man Bank. SMS Trading, new and second-hand furniture. From flat pack to fully built. See our range at Unit 24, Gladstone Park, Ramsey. All island delivery and man and a van service available. Call SMS Trading on 315 151 or find SMS Trading on Facebook. Visit Ramsey Craft Centre at Church Walk St Paul Square for beautiful yarns, fabrics, buttons, craft kits, patterns, in fact all you need for your craft works. Open Monday to Saturday. Visit Ramsey Craft Centre St Paul Square or find us on Facebook for opening times, news and offers. You're listening to the Isle of Man's quintessential daily news and current affairs roundup. Update on Manx Radio. Now, 
Less than 4% of flight delays at Ronaldsway Airport between January and July were due to air traffic control breaks. This figure has been revealed as part of a response to a Tim Wood written question and Siobhan Fletcher's been looking at this. She has the details and joins us now. Siobhan, what do we know? So the new figures published by Infrastructure Minister Tim Cruckle show of the 861 total delays at Ronaldsway between January and July, only 34 were due to air traffic control closures. The most affected month was April, which was impacted by those breaks seven times. But it's worth noting that seven out of a total 141 delays seen that month. So does the minister highlight any other reasons why the flights were impacted other than air traffic control closures? Well, he says calculating the delays attributable directly to the Isle of Man air traffic control or other Isle of Man airport related factors is actually difficult and unreliable. This is due to the fact that data relating to delays and cancellations are not collected directly by the airport, but are instead reported to a third party by the airlines, as these delays and cancellations may occur elsewhere in the network before they reach the the Isle of Man. He says airline traffic running to schedule will very rarely be impacted directly by the two morning closures scheduled to facilitate regulated ATC breaks. But when airline traffic is running off schedule, any delays are likely to be exacerbated. He adds that typically airports do not record data to do with arrivals, as instead departures are seen to be more within an airport's control. However, it would be fair to assume that the data can be extrapolated between the two. So another big complaint, Siobhan, about the airport is often that it closes before the Gatwick flight can make it in or before the return to London can go. Do these figures reflect that? Not really, Beth. So the Isle of Man Airport's published aerodrome closing time is 8.45pm. The answer actually shows that in the past three months, that's June, July and August 2024, the aerodrome has not closed before this published time and indeed extended beyond the time on 75 days out of 92. The average closing time was actually 9.16pm, meaning an average extension of 31 minutes, with the airport closing most often, that's 35 times in the period, between 9 and half past. Minister Crookle says the airport regularly receives requests from operators and airlines to extend beyond 8.45, most often due to operational issues or those delays picked up elsewhere in the network during the day. He added that airport staffing is based on the published closing time, and whilst extensions can most often be accommodated on overtime, those occasions when this is not possible or when an extension is limited are communicated in advance to operators and airlines alike. Siobhan Fletcher, thank you very much indeed. You're listening to Update 7 and a half minutes past five. Efforts to save £10 million across government are not about reducing the number of civil servants. That's from the man tasked with finding efficiencies over the next 12 months, Chief Executive Andy Ralphs. He told us government still needs to get its own house in order, despite departments already having cost improvement plans in place. There is a wider conversation, obviously, to have with you know the public and our communities, but also uh, you know with the staff that work for the Isle of Man government, see where some of those efficiencies will be driven from but I'm I'm really confident that there is there is opportunity it's not it's not about reducing staff numbers although as we become more efficient obviously um, that will impact the amount of people that work for the public sector but we will do that in a responsible and a, and a controlled way and you know like other parts of um, the island's economy we are holding a huge amount of vacancies as well so most of the uh, improvements will done done through natural efficiency and and, and uh, you know natural attraction uh, rather than, you know, I don't want people to be worried there's a massive redundancy, uh, you know, drive here. This is not what we're doing. We're just making government more efficient and making sure that we provide services in the most cost efficient way in the future. Is there a way in which more could be done external to government? You know, do we have to have public servants doing all the roles that, uh, that, that they currently employ, uh, are employed to do? So, so the simple answer to that is 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 no. We don't have to, um, you know, we don't have to just have the public service delivering. There is a role for the community. There's a role for the private sector. There's a role in terms of arms length organisations. We've already seen that with the steam packet and Manx Care. So there are further opportunities that we will look at in the future. I think the important thing is is to remember that, um, you know, the private sector they, they will have a role in helping us deliver services in the future. But again, that isn't a goal 
golden bullet. I think I'll go back to my starting point, which is the first thing we've got to do is get our own house in order. Because the danger is if we don't make it efficient, the private sector will make it efficient for us. And, and you know, sort of outsourcing a problem isn't, isn't the best approach. So... That is the Isle of Man government's chief executive, Andy Ralphs, talking to Phil Gorn there. You'll be able to listen back to more of that interview in full with the podcast for Perspective at manxradio.com. Just gone ten past five now to buses. An Arbury and Russian commissioner has described the decision to scrap the Craig Niche bus route for financial reasons as madness. Jane Glover believes there are unexplored options that could see this route maintained. We feel that the seasonal bus service is not only vital for the catering business at the Craig Niche and Sound, but you've got the Craig Niche Heritage Site and the Craig Niche and the Sound are integral parts of the Tourist Heritage Site to offer it. So it seems madness that they should be cutting off these services. And I know that the DOI have said that the, the service perhaps doesn't make any money, but we feel that if it was advertised in the right way, connected with perhaps other routes or train services, that actually that there are unexplored ways that this could be got round. I know they're having staffing issues because people can't get there. There's disgruntled residents in the area, you know, that use the buses to connect to the ports. We are also aware that the other commissioners in the south, Port Erin, Port St Mary, are against this route being scrapped. And also we are aware that Russian Heritage Trust have had, over the summer have had lots of people complaining about not being able to get to the sound. And it seems madness when they've actually been advertising it as one of the key sites to visit. Commissioners haven't been approached by the DOI to get our views on it, which we find a little bit surprising. So we really would welcome a delay in the consideration of this application so that DOI can engage in meaningful discussion with all the affected parties. The board have actually contacted the RTLC to actually ask for the application to be deferred. On a personal level, I have actually signed the petition. So so that's really where we're at, is we're trying to to get the DOI to engage. That is our brief and Russian Commissioner Jane Glover. You can find out much more about that story at manxradio.com. We've had a message from Julie, actually, who said she was listening to the discussion about the bus to the sound. And she says it's not just the sound, it's all the places in between. And she also says, can you ask about the skippy buses up north in the Isle of Man? They're a good service, but they're not linked. And she says she often sees two following each other with just one person on them. She has spoken to users. They've told them that they've been dropped off at the same time as a neighbour. It's free for pensioners who are now using it instead of regular services as it drops them at the door and the driver will also help them with shopping. It's great for them, but Julie says surely this isn't cost effective and believes that better planning would be required. As ever, if you've got any thoughts on anything, we'd love to hear from you. You can email them through when Man and Lion's in session for an open line. You're more than welcome to call in then as well if you can. Turning our attention to business then, brought to us by Ramsey Crookle and the Isle of Man's consumer inflation rate increased by 0.1% last month. Christian has the details for us. The rate at which prices are rising stands at 2.1% with education, restaurants and hotels and alcoholic beverages among the largest rises in the 12 months to August. Rent saw the largest jump in the same period by 17.3%. Meanwhile, tea, preschool fees, driving lessons, private education and repairs and maintenance charges also saw increases. Gas decreased the most by 16.8%, followed by multivitamin tablets, electrical appliances and basic foods like cheese and bread. Over a one-month period, food, drink, alcohol and tobacco rose slightly by 0.3%. However, transport saw deflation by 8.8% but remains a positive contributor to the overall 12-month change. Christian Jones reporting there. Now the stock market report also brought to us by Ramsey Crookle. And in short, Europe markets higher, French and German PMIs disappoint. Wall Street stocks were higher early today as the Dow Jones Industrial Average tries to build on its record close. Oil prices, we're told, were little changed after last week's cut in U.S. interest rates and a dip in U.S. crude supply in the aftermath of Hurricane Francine counted weaker demand from top oil importer China. And gold rose today and lingered near record high levels as bullish market sentiment after the U.S. Fed Reserve cut interest rates last week, combined with geopolitical tensions, drove prices despite a stronger dollar. And AstraZeneca was firmly lower after revealing that a key trial of its breast cancer treatment failed to improve overall survival rates.
Looking at the commodities then, gold stands up 0.16% at $2,625. Brent off 0.56% at $74.26. At the close, the FTSE 100 was up 0.33% at 8256 And a short time ago, the Dow Jones was at 42124 That's up 0.15%. And the Nasdaq was off 0.3% at 17999 I'm running late again. Do you know where I put my car keys? In the fridge. Where's my phone? Under the dog basket. Bye. You haven't forgotten that we're seeing Ramsey Cook all later? Oh, uh, no, of, of course not. Um, 5 pm, is it? Caught it a free. I'll be there. Life is busy. That's why Ramsey Crookall's team takes time to help you make a mindful investment decision. Considering all the options, giving you full control of your financial future. Less stress, more assurance. Forgot to put my shoes on. Oh. See how we can make your money work for you. Call 717171 or visit RamseyCrookall.com. Licensed and regulated by the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority. Manx Radio Travel, driven by Keyside Tyres and Service Centre. So we're not aware of anything on the road specifically at the moment causing any issues. Just the thing to remember is that one-way system in place on a section of Braddon Road. It started today. It's going to be for around two weeks. It's for the resurfacing taking place between Nobles Hospital and Bala Fletcher Road. So a section of that road is running in one direction. Uh, there are signs in place, but just do be aware there will be a little bit of a, a log jam possibly around there. All looking good down at the steam packet this evening. Everything running to time. A couple of delays down at the airport. I think the Birmingham flight uh, was the one that has delayed the most. I think it was scheduled to go at uh, or scheduled to get in at 25 past four and it's now not going to get in till half past seven. If you want a full list of what's happening, just go to the traffic and travel hub at manxradio.com. Keyside Tyres and Service Centre with one year's free engine warranty from Castrol. Get more with Keyside. 16 and a half minutes past five. Now, an event in Douglas tonight is hoping to put local businesses in touch with and celebrate those making and growing things here on the Isle of Man. Meet the Producers has been organised by government and it's taking place at the Market Hall here in Douglas. Jamie Lewis is the chair of the newly created Hospitality Board and he says this is going to be a really important gathering. It doesn't necessarily need to be issue focused. We need to just focus on supporting our local economy and the, 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 the initiative tonight I think is amazing. In. The business agency did this event in London earlier this year where they invited chefs from across London, across the country to the IFE event to meet, you know, Manx producers and for them to strike up connections. I think that's a really, really important part of government to, you know, to kind of help make those introductions for people. What's more important is that we, you know, that, that happens on a local level and that those, you know, the restaurant owners and um, cafe owners have the opportunity to meet those suppliers. And there may be people that, you know, they're not working with currently that they could make a connection with at the event this evening. And do you feel like sometimes, even though we are a very small island, that actually it's quite easy to forget about the local suppliers and providers and manufacturers that we have right on our doorstep? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, we everybody is so focused on, on their business that it, of course it's easy to miss but that, that's why like I say the, the, an event like this this evening to get everybody in the same room to get the producers to meet with restaurants that they all like likewise may not know exist they may be a small operation that can't afford a sales team or can't afford someone to you know someone to go out there and make direct connections into those businesses so I, I do I do believe it's an important part an important role for government in in helping facilitate those conversations yeah. That is Jamie Lewis, the chair of the newly created Hospitality Board, talking to Amy. We are going to be there at this gathering this evening, so you'll hear much more about it on breakfast tomorrow morning. 18 minutes past five, a long-term sustainable plan is needed for motorsport events on the Isle of Man. It's the message from the Department for Enterprise after a rather difficult 2024 Manx Grand Prix. As you may remember, it saw heavy disruption to the racing schedule, predominantly because of bad weather. Minister Tim Johnston and Chief Officer Mark Lewin say conversations are ongoing. What we all want to see is a long-term sustainable plan for motorsport and the Grand Prix is very much part of that and we're happy to work with with the the Manx Motorcycle Club and its you we we had meetings before the before the Grand Prix we've had um, some meetings since then and certainly happy to sit down with them and talk about the future about some of the challenges recognizing that you know this type of event now is 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 struggling elsewhere it is a challenge there are costs involved so we want to make sure it we can make it work for the future and we're, we'll, we're 
happy to sit down with them and, and, and help where we can. Absolutely. There's been a lot of a lot of feedback. There's been a lot of emotion. There's been a lot of, of criticism. Really keen to stress and add what the minister said. But there are many decisions made by, by, by various different elements of organisations that are done for the best intentions with a lot of complexity behind it that, that perhaps sometimes it's difficult to appreciate from, from, from the outside. What I would just say is particularly this year looking back also taking some of the feedback from previous years I know there is a commitment from all parties to take some of that feedback on board to, to go back and look at what, what can be done to, to can, tr try and respond to that but it is really really complex there are lots of considerations but but I just I just want to emphasize I know you know there's a real desire to say let's let's listen let's look at it and let's see if there are specific things that can change bear in mind as minister said this is absolutely not our event it's not not government's event but we are we are a real stakeholder we are a real supportive partner in that and we will do what we can to try and make sure as minister said that there is a really successful event for, for many many years to come that is the Enterprise Chief Officer, Mark Lewin, and just before that, the Minister, Tim Johnston, as well. It's just gone 20 past five. Sport time now. Darren's here. Hi, Beth. Good evening. Starting with FC Alleman, Ravens boss Paul Jones has said his side's first half performance left the team with too much to do as they lost 2-1 to West Didsbury and Cholton away on Saturday. The defeat meant the Manx side's six-game unbeaten run came to an end in Manchester, and Jones admits his side can have no complaints over the result. You know, I said to the lads before the game, we, there's zero excuses today. You know, we were a little bit late getting here as warm up was a little bit more rushed, but we just looked lethargic and miles away from where we have been for the last six games and it just wasn't good enough. Um, we rode our luck at times to be just one nil down, but we didn't look like we were going to get anywhere close. And it was kind of the body language and the, the kind of the, the behaviours that I've, I've not seen yet this season that kind of reminded me of about a year ago. But, we had a good conversation at half time and I thought we were excellent second half and I think if we play like that the whole game then it's a completely different story so you know their keepers made two unbelievable saves and you know we've hit the post and then they've gone down the other end and scored a goal on a counter attack so like it's uh, yeah it's a bitter one to take but um, you know I think you know, it's just what it is isn't it we, we move on to Tuesday. It feels like there's just been a cascade of things that haven't quite gone our way today from, uh, from since we got off the boat you know we that's how it is in football sometimes and you you know you don't always get what you deserve. I thought we got what we deserved first half and we didn't in the second half and you know we put up a good performance second half but we gave ourselves too much to do and I think you know another day we, we probably should be winning that one nil. Ravens boss Paul Jones. Moving on, Manx judo competitor Chris Horton has added a bronze medal to his already impressive collection. The island athlete contested both the Takiwaza and Neiwaza events at the 2024 Hamburg Veteran European Cup, which took place on Saturday. Representing Great Britain, Horton impressed in the M3U 100kg class to take the bronze medal at the close of play whilst also registering a fifth place finish in the Neiwaza section. Elsewhere, Manx athlete Ollie Lockley set a new course record as he won the Peel to Douglas run for the sixth time yesterday on Sunday. Lockley beat his own record, which he set in 2020, by 32 seconds as he completed the 10.3 mile distance in 52 minutes and 8 seconds. Elsewhere, Sarah Webster was the women's winner and set her own personal best as she completed the run in 1 hour, 3 minutes and 3 seconds to finish ninth overall. And lastly, the Alaman men's cricket team is preparing to play their first match of the 2024 Dream 11 European Cricket Championships. The Manx side will take on Croatia at 7.30pm tonight in the T10 match this evening at Cartamo Oval in Mal Malaga, Spain. The match will be streamed live on the European Cricket Network's YouTube channel. Thank you very much indeed, Darren. We'll bring you all the details of that cricket match on Sport tomorrow, 23 minutes past five. September is World Dementia Month and here on the Isle of Man a group of support services are working together just to help signpost people to any help that they may need. A number of dementia awareness events are being held throughout this week, culminating in a drop-in session at the Strand Shopping Centre in Douglas on Friday. Claire Cobberley from the Alzheimer's Society and Jeanette Hogg, the lead Admiral nurse based at Hospice, say what they really want to do is tackle some misconceptions. I think that a lot of people think that dementia is an older person's disease mm. and is just about losing your memory. And dementia is much more complex than that and will impact not just the person with dementia and not just the immediate spouse and family but maybe the wider community neighbors around them but dementia 
is a progressive disease. It's hard to tell people what that journey might look like for them because there is no definitive timeline, no matter which diagnosis they receive and which type of dementia they are um, living with, we aren't able to tell them um, what that timeline is. So it's very hard for carers to keep going and keep supporting, not knowing the time scale of how long it is. And it's a difficult journey. It is. And I think to add to that, I think there is a lot more we could be doing as an island around public health. You know, 40% of dementias we can prevent. So if you think on the Isle of Man, we've got about 1,600 people with a dementia diagnosis. That's about 600 people that we could prevent getting dementia by using a public health approach. So it's things like reducing obesity. and if Anything that narrows your arteries is going to cause you a problem. Um, you know, healthy heart, healthy brain is the way forward. But there's things around air pollution for risk factors. There's things around midlife hearing loss as a risk factor, cholesterol levels. So there is a lot that we can do from a public health approach. And I think that's what's missing on the island for me. I, I feel that we could be doing a lot more to prevent some of these dementias from even getting off the ground, really. That is Claire Cubberley and Jeanette Hogg there. And just a reminder, if you are worried about dementia or if you're caring for someone with dementia and you would like some more information, you can pop along to the Strand Shopping Centre on Friday, that's the 27th of September, from 11am until 3pm and ask any questions you have because I say that's really what they are aiming to do is just to signpost people who might need a little bit of extra help and support to the right places and hopefully uh, get that support that you might need. Just want to remind you of something that you may not have thought about, but the deadline is fast approaching. That is the tax return deadline. You have until the 6th of October to submit your tax return. Governments reminding people submitting them online is an option. Almost two thirds actually file their annual returns via the online services. If you have any concerns about making an electronic submission, there is an animated instruction video that's been produced to help people go through that process step by step. And you can find Find a link to that video at manxradio.com. If you just go to manxradio.com and click on the business section, all the support that you might need to get that tax return filed as soon as possible because uh, the 5th of October, I can't believe... October is just around the corner. It's madness, isn't it? Uh, but yes, you need to get that in for the 5th of October. And while you're on the Manx Radio website, do check out all the other things that are on there. In particular, we have the Manx Newscast, which is the longer form of many of the interviews that you hear on air. You can find a, a full selection of those covering all sorts of topics if you just uh, scroll down to the Manx Newscast. There's also a link to all of the other podcasts that we have as well. There is a whole host of podcasts which will suit every possible taste so do check those out and you can subscribe to your favourites as well that is all from Update this evening thank you so much to the Manx Radio News team for providing all of our content this evening if you'd like to get in touch with us we'd love to hear from you if you've got a story in your area or something that you'd like us to check out for you newsroom at manxradio.com is the best email address coming up next it's Island Life and it's all about the Tell Me project tonight then Chris Kinney will be here live from 6 with greatest hits always a fantastic listen it's then time for brass with ian cottier from nine and dave moore will be with you from 10 with after hours the perfect way to round off your monday thank you so much for your company as i say take care whatever you're doing this evening and try and enjoy the dryish weather while it's still here we'll be back with you from 5 p.m tomorrow 